Hello Booktube and welcome back to my channel. Today I have got for you my 2016 reading stats and my five star books. So um, what I'm going to do in this video is go through all of my stats. I am a huge geek for that kind of thing. I have been doing the, uh, I kept track on the, um, the 2016 Let's Read um, spreadsheet that was done I believe by Rich. Um, I will post a link to the 2017 spreadsheet in the down bar below. It is unbelievable for tracking. If you are at all interested in this kind of thing, it is so much fun. So I just kind of pulled the stats from that sheet um, to share with you guys here. And then I was thinking about also putting in with this my favorite books of 2016. And I went through and I looked and I had, um, I think it was 12 or 15. Um, hold on, I have it here. Um, 15, uh, I read 15 five-star books in 2016. So I just thought I'd quickly share all of those with you. Um, I'll talk about that more in a minute, but let's jump into the stats right now, okay? So, 2016 stats by genre, um, and I'm going from um, greatest to least in these um, lists. So, uh, romance, 40 books, no surprise there. Uh, Nonfiction, 15 books, that actually did surprise me quite a bit. Uh, mystery thriller, 10 books. YA, 10 books. Now, at first I thought that was kind of high, but I realized I'm counting like the Sweet Valley and the Nancy Drew books, even though they more tend to be a bit more middle grade, um, they are meant for a slightly older middle grade audience, so I'm counting them as YA. True middle grade, um, eight books, and those of course would be the Babysitter's Club type books. Um, historical novels, I read seven. Um, historical romance novels, I read four. Romantic suspense novels, two. Uh, women's fiction novels, I read two. I read one classic and one memoir. So not a bad mix, I don't think. Um, for type of book, I read 61 ebooks. Um, I have a feeling that number is going to be a lot higher in 2017. Um, I read 19 audiobooks, which was kind of a surprise. Um, 10 trade paperback books, five hardcover novels, um, four mass market uh, books, and a single graphic novel. And that was the graphic novel of um, Sense and Sensibility, which I really didn't care for. Um, my total number of pages read in 2016 was 29,470 pages. That like, blows me away. Um, for page length, I thought this was kind of fun too. For less than 100 pages, I read two books. Um, for 100 to 199 pages, I read 25 books. 200 to 299 pages, 26 books. Um, 300 to 399 pages, 34 books. Um, 400 to 499 pages, 9 books, uh, 500 to 599 pages, 2 books, 700 to 799 pages, I read 1 book, and 1 book was over 1,000. And um, just to let you guys know on Goodreads that told me this, that um, the shortest book that I read was Welcome to Icicle Falls by, I can't remember the author's name, I'll put it right here, um, and that was like 50 pages. And then the longest book that I read was Gone with the Wind at over a thousand pages. So, and the Gone with the Wind was audio. Um, for author genre, this did not surprise me. I knew this was going to be heavy on tipping one side than the other. I read 82 female uh, books by female authors and only 18 by male authors. That doesn't bother me. I knew that anyway. I read predominantly female authors and I'm fine with that. But what I did notice is when I got into my five-star reads, the amount of authors that were male that made it into that list was fantastic. Um, my best rating months were May and December. I read 11 books both months. Um, for series, I started 34 series. Not surprising there. I have 19 series that are ongoing. So in some of those cases, the ones that were started, I continued reading the series in 2016. And I completed one series, which was only a three-book um trilogy, but still I completed a series, which was great. Um, so let's jump into my five star books. I was going to rank these from least like from least favorite to favorite, but then I decided these are all five star and I love them all. And to rank them just wouldn't be, I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me. So I just thought I'd list all 15 books here for you. I'm not going to get into long descriptions on these books. Um, I will link to all of them in the down bar below so you can go check them out on Goodreads and see if there's something that you would be interested in reading. Essentially, these are all the books that I would recommend to anybody, depending on what kind of book it is that you like. And what I liked when I was compiling this list is there is a huge, like, difference between all the books. There's some nonfiction, there's some romance, there's some historical, 
you know, there's a little bit of everything and it's a really nice mix and I'm really, really happy to see that. Um, it shows me that I should really maybe start delving into some different things in 2017. Like if I like this, maybe I will like this. So let's jump into it. So in January, um, I read The Cat Who Could Read Backwards by Lillian Jackson Braun. It was the first book in the Cat Who mystery series. This is a series that is a favorite of mine. I read it years and years ago and I want to reread through it. It is a mystery, cozy mystery type book about a man and his two cats and they solve mysteries. It's super adorable. Um, in February, I read Gone with the Wind um, by Margaret Mitchell. It was narrated by Linda Stevens. I did listen to this on audiobook as I stated. This is what I would consider to be a classic historical fiction. I think you guys all know the story of Scarlet and Rhett. I don't need to get into what that book's about. Um, in March, March was my biggest month for um, five-star reads. I read four books in March that I considered five-star. So the first one was Made in America, an informal history of the English language in the United States by Bill Bryson, who was the gentleman who wrote A Walk in the Woods. Um, this was narrated by William Roberts. It is a nonfiction novel about the English language. It is fantastic. Check it out. Um, the next one was The Duke and I by Julia Quinn, the first book in the Briggerton series. This is a historical romance. I just read the second book in the series, um, The Viscount Who Loved Me, and spoiler alert from for my January wrap-up, I loved it. Um, next, uh, Summer at Willow Lake by Susan Wiggs, uh, the first book in the Lakeshore Chronicle series. This is a contemporary romance novel. Um, I have tell people all the time, if you are interested in trying out romance, contemporary romance novels, please check out this book. It is fabulous. This is the third time I've read it, and every single time it's five stars. Um, and the last one was The Darling Songbirds by Rachel Heron. Um, this is a romance novel about three sisters who have a country music singing group, or used to, have disbanded, and now you're getting each of their individual stories. This is the first book in the series. The second book came out late last year, or late 2016, and I don't know when book three is coming out yet. Or if it is, if, if it is out yet, I should definitely look into that. So, then I really had no five-star reads in April. Um, then into May, I read The Secrets of Flight by Maggie Lef Leflier. This was a historical fiction novel, and it was essentially about women pilots in World War II. It was absolutely fantastic. Highly recommend it. Um, in June, I read Reconstructing Amelia by Kimberly McCrate. It is a mystery thriller novel. Um, I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, I didn't know if I would. It has been around booktube. A lot of people have talked about it. It's about a woman whose daughter um, dies and essentially about a month after her death she gets a note stating that her daughter um, didn't commit suicide. She was killed and it goes from there. Really, really great book. Um, in July um, I had two uh, favorite books and one was To Kill a, Mock to Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Uh, it was narrated by Sissy Spacek. I did listen to it on audio. Um, I consider this to be a historical fiction slash classic novel. Um, I don't think I need to get into the story of To Kill a Mockingbird. I think we are all familiar with it, but definitely um, it's a treat to listen to the audio if you have not. Sissy Spacek does a wonderful narration of this book. Um, the next one in July was a shocker to me, was The Kite Runner by Khalad Husseini. Uh, this was a historical fiction novel about two young friends um, growing up in, I think it was Pakistan, um, in the early 1970s, and then also is modern day. Um, really fabulous novel. I couldn't put it down. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, August, I didn't have any five-star rates, but in September I had uh, two, and the first one was another surprise which was Nowhere But Here by Katie McGarry, and it is the first book in the Thunder Road series. It's a YA contemporary novel. You guys know I'm not a big fan of YA, but this book blew me away. Um, I immediately purchased the second book, and I have book three on pre-order, and I'd really like to get to the second book sometime this year. Um, fingers crossed I can do that. Fantastic story. Um, what did they, they build it as being um, Sons of Anarchy meets West Side Story or something like that. Really, really great. Um, if you don't like YA, I suggest you give it a chance anyway. Um, the next one I uh, loved in September was Let's Pretend This Never Happened, a mostly true memoir by Jenny Lawson, narrated by Jenny Lawson. Um, this was obviously a memoir. Um, I listened to it on audio, and I highly recommend that you listen to it on audio because the author is hysterical and she's great. And I think she has another book coming out this year, and I definitely have to check into that. 
<clears throat> sorry about my voice guys um, in October um, I read her Halloween treat by Tiffany Rez uh, this is the first book in the men at work series it is a Harlequin blaze romance novel it's an erotic novel it is very very spicy but it is amazingly well written and the character banter and the characters themselves it is wonderful I absolutely loved it um, November I read Bellevue three centuries of medicine and mayhem at America's Most Storied Hospital by David M. Oshinsky. This was a nonfiction novel about the history of Bellevue Hospital in New York City. Cannot recommend this book enough. I tell everybody about this book, even if they're not into nonfiction. Um, if you're at all interested in the history of medicine even, please check this book out. Um, I absolutely loved it. Absolutely. Um, and last but not least, um, sadly, this was one of the first books I finished. Well, I kind of finished this book towards the end of December, but I loved this book so much. And I will talk more about it when I do my wrap up um, next week. And that is Tinsel, The Search for America's Christmas Present by Hank Stuver, narrated by uh, Ray Porter. This was a nonfiction novel on Christmas, essentially, and modern day Christmas. And the author um, follows like four different families around a few different Christmas seasons to see how they celebrate and what have you. Wonderful. And the audiobook is fantastic. The narration is amazing. So anyway, guys, those are my 15 uh, five-star reads for the year. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so like I uh, alluded to, I do plan on getting my December um, wrap-up up up next week. I am sorry for the delay. Again, I have been sick um, and it's kind of thrown me off because I had planned on recording this video and that video um, on Saturday, but I couldn't even get out of bed. So I'm finally feeling well enough now to do some recording. I am going to do my Friday reads on Friday, and then on Saturday I'm going to record some videos for next week, one of them being my December um, wrap-up. So before I let you guys go, I just wanted to say one thing really, really quickly. Um, yesterday was my one-year anniversary on BookTube. Now, I did have a channel before, I think I mentioned that to you guys. Um, it didn't last very long, it was only a few months. Um, I was actually quite surprised I stuck with it this time because I do run um, a knitting podcast and that um, takes up a good chunk of time um, with recording time that I have. I know, you know, like essentially I've got two channels and doing um, videos for BookTube and doing videos for the knitting podcast um, you know, sometimes it's hard to find the time to do both. And, you know, so there have been some weeks here that I haven't recorded videos. There's been some weeks that I haven't put up an ending podcast. But overall, I'm still loving doing both. And I'm ecstatic that I'm here on BookTube. And I think at last time I checked on at 250 subscribers, which is um, amazing. So I want to thank every single person who subscribed or watched my videos. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, it's been a lot of fun. And not only have I heard about a lot of great books being on here and be able to talk to you guys about a lot of great books because that's the whole reason we're here is to share our love of reading. But I've made some amazing friends, um, people that I talk to, um, you know, we comment on each other's videos, Emily and um, Lizzie or uh, Lizzie Faye, Elizabeth, um, uh, Christy and Christine, um, I, you know, I'm just, I'm so thankful for everybody. Um, I've got some of my favorite booktubers. I'm debating on actually doing a video on some of my favorite booktubers. I think the catalyst this year that kept me going was that when I first had the booktube channel, it was still mostly YA, and it was very, very hard to find other booktubers who read what you read. And there seems to be a big surgence now of um, booktubers who are reading outside of the YA genre, and I love it. Um, I love hearing about all kinds of different books. It wasn't necessarily that I don't care for YA and I didn't read it. It was that it got repetitive. Every single booktuber was reading the same thing. But now you're hearing so many different um, books and different opinions, and it's absolutely fantastic, um, and I love it. So if you guys are interested in seeing a video on some of my personal favorite booktubers, please let me know in the comments below, and I will definitely try and get that video out in January because I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, but anyway, guys, I have to go and get ready for work, um, or at least have my breakfast, and um, get this video edited and put up for you guys. And I will talk to you on Friday. Um, enjoy the rest of your week. Take care and happy reading, everybody. Bye.